Thanks, Sean. Welcome everyone to the Passive House Accelerator's eighth Global Passive House Happy Hour of 2021. And we're up to episode 49. Uh, thanks for joining us. We only have a few more shows till our one year anniversary. I'm Prudence Ferreira. I'm a senior member of the Carbon Neutral Design Group at BR Plus A Consulting Engineers, and I lead their Passive House team. And uh, I just want to let everyone know, in case you're new here, that we are an absolutely inclusive gathering welcoming everyone. So no matter who you are and what you know about Passive House or Zero Energy or Building Science or what you're still learning, we welcome you. You're in the right place. And speaking of inclusion, um, in case you didn't know, Sean just mentioned it. Today is Pink Shirt Day. I also wore a pink shirt. Um, for those of you who don't know about it, it's a day for kids and adults to support lifting each other up as an alternative to bullying. And one of the many things I feel extremely grateful for about this happy hour and our community in general is the increased international collaboration and cooperation that's happening uh, through collective efforts like this happy hour and the ASHRAE 227 standard. Um, so to help me kick off this happy hour, I'd like to invite you all to unmute yourselves for a moment and join me in a toast. Here's to lifting each other up. Lifting each other up. All right. So mute yourselves and settle in. We have an extra exciting show tonight. We know that retrofits are imperative. We know our current workforce and supply chain absolutely need to be optimized to meet our 2050 carbon neutral goals. And we know this needs to be done at large scale. And while each building will go through its own process, we need to be thinking at city scale in terms of rapidly deployable, scalable, and replicable solutions. And tonight, we're going to learn more about uh, how to do this, about a five-year initiative um, to do exactly that in mid-sized European cities using the Interfit approach. Um, but first, over to Zach and Sydney to talk about some special fun we're going to have at our one-year anniversary. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Prudence. So uh, March 17th is our one-year anniversary. It's also... St. Patrick's Day, and it's also Sean's birthday. So it's a very important uh, day. And we do have an episode of the, the happy hour that night. And it was, that's going to, to feature Kim Walton, and she'll be talking about Wood Foundations and Passive House. So we're going to have that to look forward to. But we also want to celebrate in another way this, this uh, momentous one year mark of being together on the happy hour. And the way uh, Sydney Gladu, and I don't know, I think many of you know Sydney, but uh, some of you may not. She is working behind the scenes all the time to make Passive House Accelerator stuff happen. She's currently, among many things, uh, really deeply engaged in making the new website happen, which we will be sharing hopefully next month. We're really looking forward to that. Anyway, she came up with this idea of uh, Paper Plate Awards. So, um, and this is new to me, uh, but Paper Plate Awards are just, you know, awards. And we want to get, we want to, we like awards and we want to share them and uh, celebrate each other. So the idea here is we're looking for creative award category ideas, and also we're looking for nominations for awards. And so we're hoping that you can help us with this. So ideas for award categories could be, for instance, Ian, uh, most slides presented in the least amount of time, or coolest affordable project, so they can be serious, or most inquisitive attendee, um, so, so it can be, you know, it, run, run the gamut, but we're looking for creative ideas for award categories for, the, for March 17th. And then nominees can be audience members, they can be Passive House Accelerator team members, and of course they can be our presenters. So Sydney, could you share how people can submit either or both category awards and nominees? Yeah. So um, I'm going to drop a link in the chat right now that is a link to a Google forum. I'm also going to put my email so you can email me if you have any trouble with the Google form. But if you just submit on there, we will see all of those submissions. The more creative, the better. Awesome. Thank you. All right, cool. So that that um, with that, we're going to go into breakout rooms for five minutes. Um, sorry, I, I need to quickly get that together. Um, I need to figure out the right number. There we go. 
And please, in this five minutes, five minutes goes by fast, make sure you get around the whole group and uh, do some rapid fire introductions and then we'll get, we'll get started. All right, I think everyone's back. All right. So with that, I hope that was a fun, fun session for everybody. Um, I'm going to get into some quick announcements and then we're gonna get into the meat of the, pro meat of the program. So I will share my screen here. Every week at the Passive House Accelerator, we share a Passive House Week in Preview article that talks about what's coming up next. Uh, we had a cool construction tech last night with Jivan. And tonight, of course, we have a special guest, Laszlo Lepp, talking about the Innsbruck Project, Retrofit Project. On the Passive House podcast, the episode that's out right now is really great. It's with um, a, a another Passive House podcaster, uh, Ben Adam Smith, um, many people I'm sure know his work at House Planning Help, and he talks about uh, UK and Passive House, about communicating around Passive House, and also about uh, the resource called The Hub at Housing Planning Help that helps uh, self-builders figure out how to do um, deep green buildings like Passive House. We've got lots of social programming going on by other organizations, other like-minded and, and uh, um, uh, uh, folks. So um, including BS, the BS and Beer Show tomorrow night as a case study of deep en energy retrofit. So continuing on the retrofit theme. And then of course, BS Fridays uh, with Mark Willie and Dave Cooper. That'll uh, feature Rob Ho Hoskin, sorry, there's a typo there, um, ar around building performance. And also lots of um, educational programming coming up from um, all of the major and uh, uh, passive house organizations around the world, as well as other trainers. So uh, check out the website for, for details. And with that, I will hand it off to Prudence. Thank you. Oh man, I was having a hard time finding my, my mute button. Sorry guys. Thanks Zach. So I'm really excited that we have with us um, for this show, Laszlo Lepp. Um, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him in person. I hope to one of these days when, when we're all traveling again. Um, Laszlo studied and graduated in architecture at the University of Innsbruck in Austria. And after four years of working as an architect, he went back to get uh, his civil engineering credential by taking the exam. And he started working for the Passive House Institute in 2010 um, as a researcher. And now he's currently the office manager of the whole, the whole PHI department in Innsbruck. Um, and then also starting in 2018, he's been a member of the scientific advisory board of the Austrian uh, network, uh, the Passive House Austria organization. So at PHI, he works on all kinds of stuff. So consulting and certification. Um, and as many of you know, uh, you know, PHI is working on projects all over the world. So he's working on projects in Austria as well as internationally, uh, both uh, new and retrofits of existing buildings. Um, he's got a heavy focus on both um, the static and dynamic simulations. And he also is working on certification of components um, for opaque building envelopes, such as walls and construction systems. Um, and his projects, they're, they're mainly in Europe and Asia, um, with all of the challenges of cold, cool, temperate to humid, warm climates. So everything, the whole gamut. Um, and he lectures a lot conferences worldwide, published many technical papers. If you go Google him, I'm sure you can find some juicy reading. Uh, but we get to have him here live with us tonight to talk to us about the step-by-step -step renovated and pre-certified interfit buildings in Innsbruck Sinfonia project. And at the heart of this really amazing initiative is a partnership between two cities, Innsbruck and the city of Bolzano. And they're working together to achieve 40 to 50% primary energy savings and increase their share of renewables by 20% as two pioneering districts to show everyone else that it can be done. Thank you so much for joining us, Laszlo. We're really happy to have you here. Yeah, thank you very much um, for this uh, very nice introduction uh, and for the invitation. Um, um, I'm very happy to be here and uh, yeah, welcome to my presentation. Uh, I start to share my screen i hope you see the cover page yep it looks great 
of my presentation. Very good. Uh, and this is my laser pointer. Okay. So, um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I would like to give you a, a short overview about the step-by-step -step, uh, approach of NFIT refurbishments and uh, share my experiences in the huge uh, uh, European project, uh, Symphonia. Um, well, these are uh, typical existing buildings in Innsbruck, but um, the situation is uh, similar in Europe and I think maybe also in parts of uh, North America and all around the world. Uh, in Europe, we have a huge building stock from the 1950s and 70s, um, but also many buildings from uh, the turn of the last century, uh, 19 to 1920. Uh, buildings in, in general are responsible for about uh, 35 to 40 percent of the final energy consumption and uh, one third of the carbon emissions. Um, the waste majority of the buildings are inefficient and um, energy consuming existing buildings uh, that need to be prepared as quickly as possible for the time after the energy transition. So there is an urgent need for action. Uh, these existing buildings uh, need a future proof deep, deep uh, refurbishment. Um, well, there are, there are many reasons for refurbishments. Uh, the most important is that uh, components are at the end of their life cycle, but also new requirements of accessibility, uh, space requirement and uh, increase of uh, construction density and so on. Uh, from our point of view, the retrofit has to fulfill the current and the future requirements of climate protection. Um, which means a reduction of the greenhouse gas emissions. Um, the dilemma of average quality is an important issue here. Refurbishments with only average quality do not contribute to effective climate protection. With uh, today's typical component qualities, the global climate protection goals will be missed clearly. Um, these are uh, diagrams were made by my colleague, Dr. Jürgen Schneiders, uh, with uh, District BH, a tool which was developed in Symphonia as well, and can assess the energy balance of uh, districts. Um, you can see uh, um, on the right hand, uh, on the left hand side, um, uh, four different uh, calculations um, with uh, different energy standards and um, over a period of uh, 50 years um, to find out which one is uh, the best solution to reduce uh, CO2 emissions um, after this uh, period. And uh, on the right hand side is the accumulated uh, CO2 emissions over the 50 years. And um, yeah, it um, has shown that um, the economical optimum as the, the PESIFA standard would be the best option uh, to reduce uh, the CO2 emissions. Mm, let's have a closer look to, um, to this uh, uh, left uh, picture. Uh, with the black uh, line, uh, number A, you see the current German requirements, uh, business as usual. And with this um, approach, uh, we, yeah, we can reduce uh, a little bit uh, the CO2 emissions. Uh, the gray line is the same uh, energy standard, but uh, with a higher renovation rate uh, for the first uh, 10 years. <clears throat> so you can see <clears throat> um, that uh, we can, we can um, get a, a big uh, a reduction uh, of the uh, CA carbon emissions. Um, but uh, we will end at the same point uh, after 50 years. Um, then the next one, uh, number C, this is the PESIFA standard. Um, we, um, that the line start quite slow at the, at the beginning, but afterwards um, we uh, reach um, the best uh, um, result after 50 years, after this uh, life cycle of the building. Um, well, a higher renovation rate and, and the NFIT standard would be uh, uh, the best option, but uh, this was the comparison. Uh, what happens, uh, what is the difference at the end between the increasing of the uh, renovation rate and um, and the NFIT standard for uh, refurbishments. And um, 
Well, our scientific studies uh, clearly show that um, a good quality, that means passive house or NFIT as a minimum standard, can lead to a, a result with which the, the global climate protection goals, at least with regards to the building sector in this uh, um, project, can be achieved. Uh, the best and fastest way would be, of course, to increase quality and the renovation rate together. But if this is not possible because of economic reasons or whatever, then the increase in quality is much more crucial uh, for the success. So the statement, every, every energy saving measure helps uh, to limit climate change is rather misleading. And um, a deep refurbishment of existing buildings is a once in a lifetime chance uh, and uh, the future proof quality is, is a must. Um, well, this is uh, our passive house uh, criteria for new build and uh, also for uh, retrofits. I, I think I do not have to go into details as you are or most of you as uh, a professional and familiar with uh, the criteria, but I would like to point out um, two tables out of this uh, criteria, table two and uh, three, because um, we have uh, two different, uh, two different uh, ways um, to achieve the benefit standard. Um, well, one sentence to the benefit standard, um, the passive standard for a new building, uh, new build uh, uh, often cannot be feasibly achieved in uh, existing buildings uh, due to, to various difficulties. Therefore, we have the benefit standard, the retrofit with the passive house components. And there are two ways uh, to achieve um, this uh, standard through compliance with the criteria of the component method, which you can see in table two, or alternatively through the compliance uh, with the criteria of energy demand method, which is in table three. Um, only the criteria of one of these methods must be met. Um, the values correspond with the, the criteria for the certified passive house components uh, for the, in, the, in table two and um, the criteria must be complied with uh, as an average value <clears throat> for the entire building. So for example, if you uh, have a look to the opaque envelope against ambient air and the exterior insulation, uh, so the, the exterior wall insulation, and you are in a cool temperate climate, like in, uh, uh, in Austria, for example, uh, you have to reach <clears throat> Uh, 0 0.15 uh, watt per square meter in Kelvin uh, for the average uh, thermal envelope. Um, all these characteristic values uh, you can find in the PHPP in the verification sheet if you choose NFIT as energy standard and uh, component method uh, as NFIT uh, verification method. Uh, here you have a closer look, um, you see the criteria and uh, if you fulfill uh, this criteria and these values are average values uh, for the entire envelope. Well, uh, the climate zone uh, to be used for the building's uh, location is automatically determined uh, on the basis of the chosen climate data set in the PHPP. Uh, here you can see the, um, these climate zones uh, for North America. Um, and um, the, the characteristic values uh, for the uh, component method uh, depends on your climate zone. Uh, well, and now uh, let's go to this uh, huge uh, European uh, funded uh, from the European Commission funded uh, project, uh, which is uh, called Symphonia, is the short version. Uh, it's called a Smart Initiative of Cities Fully Committed to Invest in Advanced Large Scale Energy Solutions. Um, with more than uh, 30 partners from eight European countries, there are two demo uh, projects, demo cities, uh, which are located in Innsbruck in Austria and in uh, Bolzano in Italy, quite close to um, uh, each other. Uh, in Innsbruck, um, buildings with a total of uh, about uh, 65, uh, 66,000 uh, square meters are being renovated according to the benefit standard. Um, or to the NFIT retrofit plan, which uh, I will show you uh, later um, for the step-by-step -step, uh, renovation. And in Bolzano, about uh, 33 uh, square, uh, square meter uh, treated floor area. So the ratio is about uh, one third and two third in, in Austria. 
Um, the renovations mainly in the field of social housing and in inhabited state uh, in condition, so the people st stay in their apartments during their construction work. Um, but also we have uh, two school uh, or three school buildings um, and uh, all project in Austria were carried out by the local property developer uh, NHD and IIG, Neue Heimat Tirol und um, Innsbrucker Immobiliengesellschaft. Well, the reasons why a building cannot be completely renovated at once are very diverse. Um, it may have financial reasons, for example, lack of sufficient capital assets or subsidies. Um, it can have technical reasons because maybe there is an urgent need of renovation at the wrong time because other components are not at the end of their life cycle or um, efficient products are at the time of the, uh, of the implementation not available. Uh, but it uh, can also have legal reasons, um, like the, the, the main challenge in Austria, for example, the Rent Act or other legal requirements that prevent uh, cheap uh, renovations. But it may also have uh, human reasons. Uh, someone is not willing to renovate for personal reasons. This must uh, also be accepted. Um, well, all what you have no all residential buildings in Symphonia are so-called social housing projects. This means that the the state or municipalities provides low-cost housing for people with low incomes. Uh, for this purpose, people are registered uh, on a list and ranked according to a numerical system. In the case of um, an available apartment, these people can decide whether they want to move in or not. Um, yeah, the main challenges in Austria, as uh, I mentioned before, is the, the rent act for um, deep renovation measures. Um, you need 75% of the tenants uh, agreed to the uh, to the uh, to the measures. Um, so this agreement is necessary. If you want to change uh, something in the heating system or the domestic hot water distribution, you need 100% agreement. Uh, and uh, you can imagine that uh, this is nearly uh, impossible. Um, tenant agreement uh, is necessary for the construction works inside the apartment as well. Uh, if you want to implement ventilation duct, uh, for example, uh, inside the apartment, uh, you need an agreement unit by unit um, even if the property developer is the owner of the building, but the tenants can say, no, uh, uh, I don't let the, um, the worker in, and um, th then it's, it's not possible to implement um, the ventilation uh, system, for example. Well, and the solution is, uh, in case of, of uh, um, no agreements for ventilation uh, installation, for example, only step-by-step -step renovation is possible when the apartments are empty, uh, when the people move uh, out of, of these uh, units, you can uh, install uh, the, the ventilation system. So you do it step by step. Or in uh, another case, um, the windows uh, have been changed um, 10 years ago, so, so uh, for example. Um, so they uh, are um, not at the end of their life cycle. They, uh, can be changed in, in, in 15 or 20 years again. Uh, and therefore, uh, in, in the first step, uh, there are no um, uh, windows uh, uh, changed in, in these projects, for example. Yeah, and uh, at the Passive House Institute, we, we launched a, a certification scheme for uh, the step-by-step -step, uh, retrofits in 2015, I think, um, which is based on the INAFIT standard. Um, it uh, requires setting up an overall retrofit plan, which describes the different steps which will be carried out immediately or at a later point of time. Um, the plan clarifies, for example, the position of the air tightness layer and the uh, insulation layer, as well as um, a, a detail of uh, connections um, of the building assemblies. Um, and only with uh, such a general plan, a stepwise retrofit will lead to an energy efficient NFIT building in, in the end. Um, an online certification platform uh, facilitate uh, the, the uh, exchange um, and organization of documents. And this is especially important in, um, for the long time spans uh, until the last uh, step is completed. 
the first step will be pre-certified. So this is not um, uh, the, the final certification, NFIT certification, it's pre-certified. And only after the last implementation when fulfilling the NFIT criteria, uh, the, the uh, NFIT certificate can be issued. Um, each individual, individual step is calculated with the uh, variant uh, worksheet in the PHPP. And if you have a PHPP license, this NFIT retrofit plan, um, uh, which is a separate Excel file, is included uh, in this package. Yeah, this is how it, it looks like. Um, uh, the, the cover page of, uh, of this NFIT uh, retrofit uh, plan. Um, there is also a time schedule uh, on, on the different uh, uh, time and, and uh, measures. Uh, and um, yeah, you, so, so you can um, have an idea uh, what are the next steps and what is the final, um, the final NFIT step to, to reach uh, the goals. Well, this is uh, um, one example uh, after refurbishment in Symphonia, uh, which uh, has been pre-certified. Um, yeah, these are the, the advantages, as I mentioned before. Uh, and now I would like to show you one, um, another example um, before and after the refurbishment. Um, the, the point, uh, the, the viewpoint is uh, the courtyard. Um, as you can see, uh, in that case, um, there is also a, a building uh, extension on the top, so uh, you can see it uh, much better and from the street view. Um, this is before and after the uh, refurbishment. Uh, only the uh, existing building was part of the Symphonia, but uh, okay. there is a, an extension on the top, uh, two new stories were built. Um, one part of the heat losses in existing buildings is due to the thermal bridges. Uh, in the past, balconies were mainly constructed as cantilevered concrete slabs or uh, consoles without a thermal break. And to avoid these relevant heat losses after the renovation, there are two common possibilities. Um, the first one, to wrap up the balcony slab into a thermal insulation. Or the second one uh, to remove, to tear off the existing balconies and build a new thermal bridge-free construction. Uh, of course, uh, to close the open balconies with a glazing uh, facade in the front, so the, the warm warm spaces uh, as, as part of the heated building uh, L, uh, volume, uh, as a third option would be, of course, the, the optimum. But uh, this kind of changes, um, so a, um, a room instead of balcony, uh, are usually not uh, conform to building codes and also mostly the tenants don't want to give up their open balconies. So the first uh, possibility uh, is usually uh, not really uh, feasible because um, there is not enough uh, space uh, in, the, in the floor construction. Um, and uh, also the um, the new exterior wall insulation causes less balcony area, which is uh, very hard to argue with the, the residents. Um, so in the most case, uh, cases of uh, the Symphonia projects, therefore the second solution has been found as uh, reasonable uh, as uh, in project uh, you, you see in the, on the screen. Um, the balcony construction was completely uh, um, removed and a new build and a nearly freestanding uh, construction was implemented by uh, with only few connections to the thermal envelope. Um, here you can see uh, the, the punctiform connection to the thermal envelope with the space in between for the insulation material and only one uh, additional row of, of pillars were necessary to uh, for the load bearing um, uh, construction of this. Uh, uh, balconies. Uh, here you can see the cover page of the uh, NFIT retrofit plan with the intermediate results of the steps. The, this uh, ERP is of course, the NFIT retrofit plan is of course a, a booklet with uh, 20 to 30 pages uh, with all information about the final goal of NFIT and how to reach it with the different steps. Uh, information about the building assemblies, windows, uh, ventilation, photovoltaics, and all the things, but also the uh, uh, remar also remarks uh, to the interrelation between the uh, individual measures and steps are pointed out there. So you have 
be careful if you uh, change the windows um, and and bring them into the uh, thermal envelope but um, uh, you do uh, you don't um, implement uh, uh, the thermal insulation and so on so these interrelations are uh, quite uh, important um, yeah, and, and you can see uh, the first uh, bar is uh, the existing building uh, and the first step which will uh, have been implemented in uh, Symfonia are 65% uh, new windows because the other one are uh, 10, 10 years old as mentioned before and only 25% uh, of the tenants um, give the uh, uh, agreement uh, for the uh, to be connected to the new ventilation system. Uh, so the next, uh, the second step, the next one, uh, the third bar would be 100% um, uh, new windows um, after 10 or 15 years, and the last one is the 100% um, implementation of the remaining uh, ventilations. Um, yeah, and afterwards, um, at the end, we will reach the uh, the NFIT standard. Uh, here is another example uh, for the balcony situation. Um, yeah, there is. There are two anchors uh, for the balconies, uh, new foundation and uh, completely new uh, freestanding thermal bridge-free uh, balcony uh, during the construction work. Uh, well, let's go uh, to the ventilation. Mm, my personal experience is that the new ventilation concept uh, represents the biggest challenge of a renovation in an inhabited uh, condition in every respect. Uh, this requires the greatest intrusion into the apartment where the privacy is the most disturbed. Um, this work takes uh, the longest and causes uh, the most dirt for the residents. And um, as I said before, in addition, according to the Austrian legal requirement, each individual resident uh, requires the consent um, um, to be able uh, for this uh, refurbishment measure. Uh, and both uh, property developers in Innsbruck uh, try to minimize the installation effort and uh, construction work. Um, so empty apartments were used to optimize the construction time and pollution. Uh, and with uh, these model apartments, the time for the construction in the apartments was reduced from uh, initially uh, some weeks at the beginning to only five working days uh, per apartment. And uh, this picture uh, show a space a saving possibility to implement a centralized ventilation system with uh, vertical air ducts. Uh, you can see here triangular uh, breakthroughs in the uh, stair landing make a vertical uh, distribution system for supply and uh, extract air possible um, and uh, without uh, restrictions of, of the, the stair width um, because um, yeah, we need to keep this uh, one uh, meet 120 centimeters, uh, but there is a, a remaining uh, small space uh, in the corner, uh, which we can we we we, we uh, can use for the uh, for the duct system for the vertical ducts. Um, yeah, and this is uh, yeah, and and uh, here, um, so this is in the staircase, a public staircase, and uh, here uh, we can enter into the apartment. Uh, through the wall um, and come in uh, into this um, uh, room uh, and um, these are the ducts uh, supply air and uh, extract air ducts uh, to the rooms uh, with a suspended uh, ceiling at the end yeah for us in, in five uh, working days inside the apartment um, and that project uh, is another solution uh, another solution could be uh, implemented um, due to the floor plan design and um, spatial requirements of the building, the supply air ducts could be integrated onto the uh, outside of the exterior walls and existing um, insulation uh, of the wall allowed to complete uh, the, the integration of the duct work within the new insulation with uh, reduced uh, thermal bridge effects and um, yeah, through this uh, solution, the, the, the intervention in the apartments could be reduced to a minimum, resulting in a much higher acceptance and uh, satisf uh, satisfaction of the residents. Um, 
yeah, uh, the supply air ducts, all the supply air rooms are on the, at the south uh, and uh, all the extract um, air rooms are the north facade. So uh, it was a luck to uh, uh, implement this situation as a centralized ventilation system on the roof. And um, yeah, there are so uh, cutouts of the existing, there are uh, uh, 80 millimeters. Uh, um, I think there are um, about four inches. Um, yeah, so, so for, sorry for that. So all, uh, <laughs> all uh, uh, I, I speak in metric systems without uh, the IP units, but it's about four inches uh, um, existing um, um, insulation material on the walls. And uh, then uh, they were cut out in, in the line of the uh, of the duct system and uh, they are fully integrated and then uh, the new um, 20 centimeters of uh, 200 millimeters new insulation material can cover um, all this um, uh, duct work on the facade. Yeah, one uh, hint, um, but not uh, going into details because uh, fire protection is uh, quite different in every, every country and region, uh, but uh, of course you have to pay attention uh, to your um, local or national fire protection requirements. We have to implement here uh, some uh, fire protection elements by uh, going from outside to inside through the wall. Um, yeah. Uh, here are the calculated energy savings. Um, they are, uh, um, well, expected uh, around 84% uh, uh, percent after the last step uh, with a 100% uh, retrofit rate um, all over the uh, 11 uh, buildings out of 18 from Symphonia. So only 50,000 square meters uh, have been calculated. Uh, but uh, for us, not only the planning, but also the performance of the buildings in operation is very important. With our calculations, we want to simulate the real conditions of the buildings and therefore feedback from measurements in, um, is very important for us. And my colleague, uh, Søren Pepper, has compared the PHPP calculations uh, with the uh, measurement results. And this uh, project uh, shows again how accurate and reliable the PHPP is. Um, these bars uh, match uh, quite well, um, considering the boundary conditions and um, also the high uh, range um, for the monitoring. And uh, the deviation is, is almost uh, insignificant. So uh, the 26.5 uh, kilowatt uh, hours per square meter and uh, year is um, uh, at the moment, uh, so it's it's not the uh, NFIT standard, but the first step at uh, at the real condition. So it's not not the standard condition at, at uh, 20 uh, centigrees. Uh, so um, this is at the, uh, um, uh, the the monitoring uh, uh, temperature. Uh, yeah, but why uh, do the buildings uh, performing so well? Uh, because there is a quality assurance behind. Uh, here you can see all the uh, certificates or pre-certificates. We have two uh, uh, final NFIT certificates because they are school buildings and uh, could be implemented 100%. And all other buildings are pre-certificates, uh, pre-certified. Um, and uh, well, they are only issued if the exactly defined criteria have been met um, and uh, the quality assurance is uh, the key to success. Um, well, and now um, I'm at the end of my presentation, but I have some uh, slides at the end. If you are interested in the monitoring results of Symphonia, uh, please visit us at the uh, International Passivos Conference in September. An abstract has been submitted. Now we hope that uh, it will be accepted by the Scientific Advisory Board, uh, but we will have interesting presentations on high efficient refurbishments for sure. Um, and if you are interested in the Symphonia in general, here's the, the website. Uh, I can also put some uh, other uh, links into the chat box afterwards. And uh, I would uh, also recommend this uh, very good um, free uh, online handbook uh, of the step-by-step -step retrofits, um, which um, was uh, a result of this uh, Eurofit uh, project, which was another uh, um, European project before Symphonia. 
uh, you can download uh, load, uh, it for free. And uh, well, um, we have also the building certification guide uh, with a detailed explanation of the step-by-step -step, uh, approach. And uh, yeah, and the last slide is um, about our new um, global campaign of the International Passive House Association and all its uh, um, worldwide affiliates for 2021 with the slogan efficiency, the first renewable energy. Uh, using the hashtag efficiency first, um, combined with a, a competition um, where you can win uh, prizes, for example, tickets for the conference. And um, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's still running until 1st of March. So just join in and uh, visit our website. Uh, thank you very much for your um, attention. And um, yeah, I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellent. Marlo. And sorry for being so late. I, it's, it, I prepared too much slides. I hope it's okay to speak uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm very I, sorry for that. <laughs> I think everyone welcomes the information. It's okay. Yeah, no, fantastic, uh, Laszlo. And I know there's a few people that want some, some links, so maybe a little bit, um, we can go back and grab some of those links off you, but let's dive into it. Susan, or I mean, climate emergency, you get the first question tonight. Oh, thank you. Um, um, I was asking a question actually, it was sort of uh, random, it was about the tenants and uh, it was just sort of, I think all of us here in North America heard this thing that you need to have 100% of acceptance and I think it all sent us into a bit of a panic um, and just wondering, can you, are you allowed to incentivize them, like offer them a free year of Netflix? something or is, like, is there any way around that? Um, well, uh, there are uh, different possibilities. So uh, one possibility is to, um, well, this, this um, technically solution for the balconies is not only technical solution, but it's, it's a more um, a new, if they get a new uh, bigger balcony, for example, so the, the acceptance will be uh, will increase, for example. Yeah, uh, the problem is with the uh, um, uh, with the, uh, the agreement is that if the property developer uh, invest money for the refurbishment, uh, they can of course uh, also increase uh, the rent costs. Uh, and uh, I, I don't, it's it's limited because it's social housing. But uh, yeah, the people have to pay more. Um, of course, they have also higher quality, higher comfort. Of course. Um, but this is uh, usually the problem. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Devin, you're up next. Laszlo, thank you so much. Amazing work. And thanks for staying up till two in the morning. You're awesome. This is great. Uh, the, uh, I was wondering like kind of two things if I could really quickly. And that was one regarding the hundred percent occupancy. Um, that's for the domestic hot water HVAC. That's obviously very difficult. And I was wondering what you think the motivation of that is it like a trade union thing or a fear or a cost and the, but more so like how often if at all do you find it necessary to add lime or other coatings to the masonry in these projects and thank you so much thank you very much for your question uh, <clears throat> well the problem uh, uh, for, uh, about the domestic hot water is th this ch if you want to change because the most apartments has a decentralized system with an electric boiler in there. If you want to change this into a centralized system or uh, uh, another system, um, there is another uh, calculation of the energy costs. And uh, if they change this uh, calculation system and, and you have to pay more or less on, on, on everything else, everyone have to, uh, has to accept this and, and, um, uh, and to agree to this new calculation method. And this is yeah, nearly impossible in practice is you, you never get 100%. Uh, uh, and what was the second question, sorry? Uh, how often, if at all, do you find it necessary to add lime or other uh, coatings to masonry in these projects? Uh, like, um, mm -hmm. kind of like, yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I'm, um... I'm not able to answer this question, but I, I, I can figure out this. Yeah. If you, okay. If you, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Thanks, Devin. Uh, Zach, why don't we head over to you? All right, great, thank you. So I wanna give a big shout out to our sponsors for making evenings like tonight possible and, and all the work that we do at the Accelerator. So a big thank you to our founding sponsors, 475 High Performance Building Supply, Backstingui Architects, Glavel Foam Glass Gravel, Minotaur All-in-One HVAC and Dehumidification, Mitsubishi Electric Train HVAC US, Partel, RDH Building Science, Stocorp, and Zola Windows. Also, thank you to our stakeholder partner, NYSERDA. And thank you to our patron sponsors, BR Plus A Consulting Engineers, Brennan Brennan Insulation and Air Tightness, Innotech Windows and Doors, and US Engineered Wood T-Stud.